Converting this model looks pretty hard. Find out what happened when I attempted to convert a Necron Hexmark Destroyer and it's coming right up. Necrons! Nick speaking and welcome to this video. Right today we are going to attempt to convert the Necron Hexmark Destroyer. I already have one of these miniatures built just like the instruction book tells you to build it. It's a single posed miniature and I want to build another one and I want it to look totally different. Now, just for reference, I haven't glued this original miniature to the base for painting purposes. It's just going to be easier to get to all of those guns and wires without it being glued to the base. So the first thing that I did when it came to doing a conversion for this guy was just study the model and try to get an idea of what I need to do. As I said, this is a single posed miniature and it's got those six guns which are all attached by six little wires. That's going to make it pretty awkward to move those guns around. We've got a few options which we are going to discuss. We've also got the head which whilst the kit comes with two different heads, excellent, the head is in the same position. So I'm thinking I'm going to try to move the head so that he's actually looking in the opposite direction. And then the lower section of the miniature, of course, is on three legs, the sort of Scorpec destroyer design. In an ideal world, I would like to move the arms into different positions. I'm thinking I could potentially just cut the wires off, not have any wires, however, well, we've got that big orb on the top and of course the guns are supposed to be powered by that orb. So I think the wires are integral to the miniature. So I'm not liking the idea of no wires. We could potentially move the wires just physically by bending them slightly, or we could potentially just heat the wires up to move them around and maybe get the arms in slightly different positions. However, the wires will still have the same length and I'm thinking we're not going to be able to get too much movement that way. So the other option is to make our own wires. We could potentially make them from green stuff. And I do have a green stuff tentacle maker which could potentially make these wires for me. So those were the sort of options that I was thinking of regarding the wires. The legs, I wasn't quite sure what to do with those. Potentially just cut them, maybe move the position of the legs. And of course the base itself comes with a piece of terrain and I'm definitely going to use a different piece of terrain or something different on the base just to make it look different from the original miniature. So after studying the original model it was time to get working on this one and the first thing I did was cut all of the pieces off of the sprue and just remove all of the mould lines. Now I did keep these pieces in order of the instruction book, in particular the arms, because the arms are sort of matched and I just thought it would just be easier to do that. I don't necessarily think that I had to do that when I actually came to building it, but at the time I didn't know that, so I kept them in order. And then I went to my bits box. Yes, this is my entire Necron bits box, not that many bits actually for Necrons, that's because most of the kits, certainly the older ones, where you just had nothing left over. These days you tend to have bits left over. Anyway, this is my collection of bits from over 20 years of collecting Necrons. Necrons! And I just went through these bits trying to get some inspiration for the conversion. I have this little spider from Spellcrow and I thought, well, maybe I could sort of have that maybe on his base. But I wasn't too convinced on this. And I also was sort of saving this for a Technomancer conversion in the future. And talking of that, I do actually have a spare Technomancer spider because I've already converted a Technomancer. I put him on an old Canoptic spider, the metal one. So I had this left over and I thought, well, maybe I could use this. But again, I wasn't convinced. I have this little cool fella. Now he is a 3D printed spider which Richard did for me. Now when I asked Richard to do this for me I thought it was going to be bigger and I was actually going to use it again for a Technomancer sort of conversion. However he's not quite big enough for that and at this moment in time I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with it. Potentially I could use it on the Hexmark Destroyer but I think it's a bit big for the base as like an extra on the base, so I'm going to save this. Now if you have any ideas 
what this little spider could be used for in a conversion, how I could use him, then let me know in the comments box below. And then I came across some extra wraiths which I had in my bits box. Now I already have 18 metal wraiths, so I was saving these for conversions. As you can see, they're already sort of half painted. I think I was given these by a subscriber. So I decided that maybe what I could do is change the three legs for the bottom half of a wraith. Now I didn't want the Hexmark Destroyer to be really tall, much taller than the original model. I wanted it to be around the same height. So in actual fact, the bottom half of the wraith seemed to be the perfect size when I measured it. So what I did is I put the bottom half in the Biostrip 20 for half an hour and then I just used a toothbrush and I took off the paint. And all of a sudden I had the starting point for my conversion. Now I wasn't sure exactly how this towel section was going to attach to the miniature so I got the instruction book out and had a good look at it. It works out that the area that I want to attach the bottom of this wraith towel to is attached to the actual legs so I would have to cut that off at some point. I then had a look at the torso and how the torso goes together. Of course, the idea is that the arms are supposed to attach inside the torso before you glue them together. So I had to sort of hold off on that. I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do with the arms. And then I got the actual wraith tail itself and just worked out roughly how it was going to be on the base. Now with the metal material, it was quite easy just to bend the towel slightly. So I worked out where I wanted it on the base. I just cut out a little hole for the stem of the wraith to go into. I bent the towel to the shape that I would like it to be into. And of course I filed all of the mould lines off of the towel with my little file, just gently filed out the mould lines. And then I went to work on pinning the towel. So next I got a hand drill with a one millimeter drill bit and then a paper clip and I started to pin this guy. I wanted to pin the metal towel to the torso just to make sure that it's going to be nice and strong, but also because I'm probably not going to glue this together until the end, again, for painting purposes. So I drilled a hole into the bottom of the towel, and as you can see here, I've got the towel bent now, and I've got the hole drilled out into the base. So I'm just preparing the bottom half of this miniature. So with that done, I then went about cutting off the little joining section that was going to join onto the wraith body, which was attached to the legs. So I just put the piece of plastic on some blue tack on a paint pot, allowing me to push the knife in without bending any of the plastic. It just makes a nice easy area to push the knife in and get a clean cut. So that's what I did, just cut off that little section. Now what I tried to do is make sure that I didn't ruin the actual leg area because potentially I could use that with the three legs for another conversion. So I tried not to ruin that bottom section and I successfully did that. So then all I had to do was get that little section which I'd cut off and glue it to the rest of the torso on the top half of the miniature. Once that was fully dry, I then drilled out a little hole to put the paper clip in. And now I have the torso attached to the wraith towel and where it's pinned of course I can rotate it because at this stage I haven't got a clue which angle I'm going to have the torso compared to the towel. Plus like I said it's going to be easier after painting just to glue these two together with some super glue. Okay so next I'm going to have a look at the head. Now as I said the original model is facing to the right, our right and I want this to be facing to the left. However, the neck piece is angled that way. We've also got the two little neck pieces to worry about as well that just join into the neck. However, I started off by cutting the neck section just in that groove there. My idea is to rotate it and glue it back into position. I'm going to have to cut off the little nodule just there, otherwise the head of course will be upside down. So I'm going to have to do that. Now in terms of the neck pieces, I'm not sure yet. Maybe just trim them down slightly, maybe green stuff them in, or potentially just cut them off totally. I think potentially it might look okay without those neck pieces there, but we'll see. The first job is to cut that off 
rotate it, glue it back on, and then have another look at it. Okay, so that worked out very successfully. I used the other head, of course, to what I used on the original, and it's looking pretty cool. Now, in terms of those neck pieces, I did decide just to remove them totally. It just would have been too fiddly to try to green stuff them in, and to be fair, without those neck pieces there, it makes no difference at all. I don't think anyone could tell, especially when you've got all of the arms just covering most of the miniature anyway. So I was really happy with that, and now it's looking the other way. The model is starting to look pretty different. So now it was time to really consider how I'm going to do these arms. I just uh, dry fitted the front plate onto the body just to, for me to visualize what was going on, but I'm pretty confident I'm probably going to just glue this on, allowing me to uh, then repose the arms without having them in the fixed position. I was thinking maybe I'm going to have to stuff green stuff in the holes. Uh, maybe I might have to just cut out some of the plastic. I just had a good think about how I could do these arms. Now, as I said earlier in the video, I definitely want wires because I just think it suits the aesthetics and how the miniature is sort of supposed to shoot these guns from that big orb on the back. So wires it was. And I didn't particularly like the idea of bending these wires that are already there. I just felt I wouldn't get the dynamic pose that I'm sort of hoping to get. So it's going to be replacement wires and green stuff is an option. However, I remembered when I did my Emperor's Children conversions, I got this. This is guitar wire. Now this wire looks very convincing as cables on miniatures, as I said, I use this on my Empress Children quite a lot. So I thought, how about I use these cables to replace the little wires. Now I've got different thicknesses and I wasn't quite sure which thickness I was going to use at this stage, but what I did is I drilled out the holes. So on the back section there, I used my one millimeter drill piece and I drilled out the three holes that the cables go into on the back. Now, I did the same for the arms. I cut the wire off and I drilled a hole out in its place. And then at the top of the arm where you have the little nodule which lets it go into the body in the fixed pose, well, I just cut that off. And then I just reshaped it with my knife slightly just so that I got a ball joint. I then went to the body itself and before I glued the chest plate on, I just cut out some of the little nodules that were there for the fixed pose. And then I put the arm into the joint and it's now totally movable on that little joint for me to repose the arms. So the arms and the body are ready for the arms to be glued into place. So I started off with the right hand side of the miniature as we look at it, because on the original miniature, those arms are in the upward position. So I thought if I switch that around, make the left side in the upward position and the right side downwards. And I glued on two arms. As you can see, they're just drying there in place. Now I did this in the morning before I went to work and I actually took the miniature to work to work on in my lunch break. And then I glued on the rest of the arms. So I had three arms on that side in the downwards position. And then I glued the other three arms on, on the other side in an upwards position. And now, compared to the original miniature, it's looking a lot different. However, I still need to sort out the wires. After careful consideration, I went for the red one, which is a 5A. I don't know if that means anything to you. If it does, then great, it means nothing to me. But the red one seemed to be A, the right thickness, but also, and more importantly, more bendy. I felt I could bend this wire more than the slightly thicker one, which I could have used as well. So the red wire it was. Now, I'm not going to lie, this was pretty tough. Not impossible, but you know, you had to have some patience. So I trimmed the wire down first to give me a reasonable uh, length to work with. And my first idea was to super glue it into one end and then sort of bend it and get it into the other hole. That didn't quite work. So what I had to do was bend it into the rough position first before doing any gluing. And that did mean actually bending the section which went into the arm uh, quite a bit, to angle it quite a bit. And I did that just using my little pliers. And then I just got it into the rough position. 
uh, trimmed it to the right size and then I super glued both ends into the holes at the same time. I was really happy how the first one looked. Now for reference, I was going to change the order of the arms because I thought that might help the pose a little more, but the way the wires go into the arms, I had to keep them in the same order, the top, the front and the back arms in the same position just because of the way the wires sort of interact with the arms. So I did the next arm and then it came to doing the third arm and I had a bit of an issue because the third arm is glued at the elbow joint where I drilled the hole. So basically what happens when I tried to glue the wire in, the elbow joint just sort of came off from the glue. So what I had to do was actually glue the elbow joint back on with the wire all at the same time. So I just put some super glue in and I just sort of held it all together until it had dried. It worked out fine. I've got a little gap which I am going to fill up with the green stuff before I paint it. And there you go, that's all the wires done. I tried to get the loops to all match with each other even though some of the wires themselves were slightly longer than others. I got those loops to sort of match in size. And then when he's on the Wraith base, he's looking pretty cool and also is the same height as the original. Now I was thinking of using this little uh, rubble on the base itself just to bring something extra to it. I wasn't quite sure if I'm going to have him sort of rotated to the left or to the right at this stage, but I was really happy how he was looking. However, I thought it would be pretty cool and with all of the comments that you guys gave me, it would be nice to have the relic on this guy, the gauntlet of the conflagrator. Yeah, basically the flame relic, which in game actually suits this guy quite well. Now some of you said that you changed one of the guns to make it bigger, and I did consider that. However, he still has six guns as well as the relic. The relic is like an extra thing. So I had a closer look at the model and my bits box once again, I found this little gun from the Praetorian kit and I thought this potentially could work. So I looked at the original idea of just making the gun bigger. I cut the little uh, section off with the hand off of that piece and it sort of worked quite well. I thought I could just magnetize it onto the front of that gun and then when I'm using the relic, I can just put it on and when I'm not, I can take it off. However, like I said, I like the idea of still having those six guns and have the relic somewhere else on the miniature. And that's when I came up with the idea of putting it on the front of the Wraith towel. Now it doesn't fit perfectly into the Wraith towel how I originally wanted it with the crystal from that gun pointing outwards. It fitted pretty well with the crystal pointing inwards, but I just didn't like that. So what I had to do was bend the two little claws at the front of the towel there, allowing me to have space to physically glue this extra piece of plastic onto. And then I got some pliers and I just gently pushed the two pieces of metal back together and then I just filed out any of the little imperfections that I'd made uh, from using the little pliers. And I was really happy how this looked. Not only did it not look like a wraith body so much, but now it has the relic. And there he is all finished. And like I said, I haven't pinned the top half to the towel for painting purposes. And I do have the option to repose him. I'm not sure if I like him as he is with his gun sort of looking over that wall, pointing in that direction or if I rotate him the other way and have him sort of going past the wall. I'll have to decide after I've painted him. And here he is against the original miniature. As you can see, the height is pretty much the same. He matches the original miniature, but he looks very different. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the wires green on the original miniature. And then on my converted one, I'm going to paint those wires silver, another point of difference. I'm really happy with him but what do you think? Let me know in the comments box below. And if this video was useful to you, then why not subscribe? And if you want to see some more conversion videos from me, then here is a playlist for you to check out.